Hi everyone, this is Kristen Armstrong from Shepherd Elder Law here in Hutchinson and we are working from home. Our offices are closed um, like many other places around town, uh, trying to keep our employees safe, our families safe, and more importantly our clients safe because um, we do work with the most vulnerable uh, people. So uh, we are working from home. You can reach us by phone um, just like you normally would. Um, but nobody is in the office or there's no physical presence in the office, so do know that. So uh, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, um, since we are live, feel free to type them in the comment box there or uh, you can always message them, direct message them to us if you want to ask it a little bit more anonymously. So we'll be live for probably 10 minutes or so. Kind of depends on um, if we have any questions and then um, uh, how quickly I talk. I know I'm a fast speaker, so I try to I will try to slow down. Uh, so while we don't have any questions, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that we should all be thinking about, um, and that is advanced directives or, and medical directives. Um, what are medical directives? Um, they are le it is legal paperwork that's put into place uh, to tell physicians what your wishes are in the event that you're not able to communicate those wishes. So uh, an example of that would be if you're in a coma, if you uh, have been seriously injured, if you are terminally, terminally ill, uh, or if you have severe dementia. Um, and then, of course, accidents always happen, and uh, if you don't have something in place, um, the doctors aren't going to know what your wishes are. So uh, adv advanced directives are really important. Um, some of the common questions that I get, um, I do a lot of lectures uh, or, or public speaking around town just to kind of help educate people um, about what the differences are between uh, advanced directive, uh, DNR, living will, um, medical power of attorney, financial power of attorney, sometimes just called durable power of attorney. There's lots of terminology out there. Some of the, some of the terms mean the same thing and sometimes they mean a little bit something differently. So. Um, one of the biggest misconceptions that I have uh, when people are talking to me about end-of-life decisions is that they will tell me, uh, and, and maybe I'm talking with somebody who is in their 50s because I do estate planning for people of all ages. And so somebody in the 50s might say, well, I have a DNR in place. And I'll say, are you sure you have a DNR in place? Because it's not something that uh, traditionally people who are healthy have in place and that's because a DNR it says do, do not resuscitate that's what DNR stands for and it's a doctor's order and basically what it does is it tells the doctors that if your heart stops you don't want to be resuscitated you want um, you just no CPR for you um, and so somebody who's healthy um, would ordinarily not have a DNR order looks like we have poor connection I apologize for that there's three of us here using internet. So, um, the other, uh, what's the other thing? So, um, that's the DNR, whereas the living will, or sometimes we call it advanced directive. Um, and we call it, we usually refer to it as advanced directive because people hear the word will and they think living will is the same as a last will and testament, which is really different. They're two very, very different things. Um, so the living will slash advanced directive, um, tells the doctors what your end of life wishes are, um, but it's not a DNR. It doesn't tell the doctor, don't resuscitate me. What it does say instead, it can say a lot of different things, but what our document that we prepare, what it says is that I do not wish to live a meaningful life, uh, then let me pass away. Sorry, it's connecting in and out. So, um, it, so basically it just says, if I, if my death is imminent, if I'm in a permanent vegetative state, let me die. I don't want any life prolonging measures to be taken for me. Um, we can also write an advanced directive that says, you know, I, I wrote one the other day that said, um, I want to try to live for about six months. So if, if I'm in a coma and it shows I don't have any permanent vegetative, I'm in a permanent vegetative state, um, but give me six months. So we wrote it that way. Um, we also have some out there that says, you know, I'm of the Catholic faith or whatever faith or religion that you are and what your beliefs are uh, that says that, um, you know, this is what I want when it looks like this is what it, I want end of life to look like for me. Um, so, yes, you can kind of use a boilerplate form, um, but 
there's there's ways to modify it to meet your specific wishes. So um, that is the living will slash advanced directive. There are some out there that have check the box. Um, most attorneys have gotten away from check the box type forms. But if you are um, trying to write your own online and you find forms, um, some of them have, have those check boxes on there. I would say be very careful about those, especially in times uh, like today uh, when we have COVID-19 and many, many, many people are needing to be on ventilators. There's, we all know there's a huge shortage, but many people need to, a ventilator. And if they have a check the box type of form, if, they, if they're in a coma or they're not able to ex express what their wishes are to a doctor and they have an advanced directive that says, don't put me on a ventilator, um, then that would be problematic for you right now in terms of COVID-19. So do be careful about that. Um, I, I typically advise against the check the box. Uh, same thing would be true. There's one of the boxes on there is usually uh, mentions hydration and nutrition, artificial hydration and nutrition. So if you say that you don't want that, and let's say that you're on a ventilator or you're, you're the only thing that would, if you don't have artificial hydration and nutrition, you would die, but otherwise they think you would have a full recovery, then by all means, most people would say, I want the, the hydration and nutrition, I want the IV fluids. Um, so be, be careful not to put yourself into that, uh, the, to back yourself into the corner there and have that little checkbox. Um, type of form. Um, the other one that is really important, especially these days, is the medical power of attorney. The medical power of attorney is always what we call springing, meaning it only comes into effect if you are unable to uh, tell the doctors what your wishes are. So by you signing a medical power of attorney, it doesn't give somebody authority to make decisions for you to put you in a nursing home. Um, that's always something people are feel fearful of or an assisted living facility or something like that. Um, instead, it only allows people to make decisions if you're not able to. For example, my daughter was in surgery and uh, let's forget the fact that she's a minor, but my daughter was in surgery and um, my husband and I are waiting in the waiting room and the doctor calls back from the, uh, the surgery room and says, you know, we need to do this or that medical procedure. Is that okay? Um, if my daughter was an adult, 19 years old, we, we might not have been able to consent to that um, if she didn't have something in place saying that we are able to make those decisions. Um, certainly if she was married, um, maybe parents wouldn't be able to make those decisions. So that there's always that kind of thing. We always recommend um, that if you are over the age of 18 or if you have children who are over the age of 18, uh, they should have a, a health care power of attorney put into place. Um, they should also have uh, an advanced directive uh, slash living will, uh, and they should probably also consider a last will and testament and at the very least a financial durable power of attorney as well. Um, but but uh, especially for them, those medical power of attorney documents are really important. So. Um, I am not seeing that I have any questions here. I'm going to check on my Facebook page real quick to make sure I don't have any hiding in the inbox. I don't see any. So I'm going to end this one. Um, thank you all for joining us. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Shepherd Elder Law, 620-662-2905. Stay well, stay inside. Uh, keep everybody safe and flatten the curve. Thanks. Bye-bye.